hello everyone. Today I'm gonna be talking about um Jack. So I put together this presentation. Uh <laughs> very nice. So what is Jack? Um so uh Jack uh is basically a program which um starts an audio server which then clients or programs can connect to and therefore uh, be programmed by Jack. So Jack stands for Jack Audio Connection Kit, and it's a recursive acronym uh, because of Linux. So yeah. Um, so what does it do? So it's basically virtual cables. So let's say you have a table. Okay. So just envision a table. Um. So you, you have your. So then you say. Then let's say you put like, for example, a sampler, and speakers and like a keyboard okay so you take the keyboard and then you connect it via cables to the sampler and then the sampler c connects to your speakers all of this via cables so you can do this virtually keeping different programs connected via quote unquote virtual cable using jack so let's go ahead and talk about how to use it so what i use for my personal jack setup is um what i use for my personal jack setup is qjack ctl and carla there are a couple of different programs. Um, so, for example, Cadence, Carla, and QJAX ETL. Now, I personally don't use Cadence because if you install Cadence from uh, the official Arch Linux repos and not from KX Studio repos, then it just won't work. I don't know why, but it just doesn't work. Um, some some scripts are just missing and it doesn't work. However, I really like Carla and I really like QJAX ETL. So in order to so in order to install both of them, just install them from your repositories. They are uh, both of these are an official Arch Linux repositories. So yeah. So yeah. Um, go ahead and install those. So to start your Jack server, ba basically you want to go ahead and basically you want to go ahead and launch QJAX ETL and press the start button. Now, QJ now Carla can't ac doesn't actually have the ability to start the server, it just manages it. So, go into your setup thing, and you wanna select your driver to either ALSA or OSS. Um, these are the two like actually working ones, however, if you're on a modern Linux system, just select ALSA and you'll be fine. So also, and make sure you enable real time. A lot of programs such as you know Ardor or just a lot of different programs in general need real time in order to work. So the Arch Wiki actually has actually has a page on this. So uh, we can actually take a look at Jack, and you can take a look at real time somewhere, real time scheduling. So. Basically, in order to turn this on on Arch Linux, go ahead and install the real time privileges package and then add your user to the real time group. Then uh, restart your session. So, yeah, that is basically how you enable real time and get all of your programs to work. Uh, in advanced, uh, basically leave everything and also leave all, everything to default. Because that'll give you good settings. Uh, anyway, other than that, you, there's really nothing else that you really want to be configuring. Only like different uh, settings that optional. So let's take a look at this current jack setup. So as you can see here, these are basically virtual cables. So um, essentially what's happening is you have your system outputs, okay? And inputs and outputs. So this is your system input. So your system input is capture one and capture two. These are the stereo inputs for for your microphone. So this is my microphone that you're hearing me through right now, Capture 1 and Capture 2. So this is going into our door in order to enable physical audio monitor monitoring. Don't really know what that does, but it's good. So that so these microphones by default are going into our door using these cables. So then they're going into an audio gain, so you can see here. This is the audio gain, and that's basically making my microphone a bit louder because it's very quiet. And then it's going into the output for you to see with the screen recorder. So audio output one using these cables right here. 
So in order to draw, in order to draw a new, um, in order to draw a new cable, you just press on your output or input, and then just drag. Boom! You have your cable. So for example, if I wanted to hear my microphone, I don't know why I would want to do that. I would take these, and then I would drag them to the playback. So down here, I have the system playback thing. So the system playback thing is essentially uh, what your speakers are. So as you can see, I have all of these output things from Ardor. By the way, Ardor is a doll if you didn't know. And Ardor is outputting all of its outputs into into my stereo speakers. Um, so yeah. So now let's take a look at what we're actually seeing right here. So this right here is called a patch bay. And and the reason I use Carla is because it has two very, very useful features. First of all, the patch bay, you can actually work with it. So in QJAC CTL, you have this thing called the graph, and it looks kind of like similar, but really doesn't work. Like, uh, you can't really draw any connections or anything like that. As you can see, it's just useless. It doesn't work. So, and then the actual patch bay, where you can draw stuff, looks like this, which doesn't look very nice. Um, yeah. Anyway, so the reason I use Carlos is because it has a very nice looking patch bay that actually works, so you can draw your different uh, inputs and outputs into different uh, things. And also it has a rack, so essentially what you can do is you can add whatever kind of plugins you want. So, for example, MIDI gain or audio gain, which is what I'm using, and then it will input here and you can control it. If I wanted to do put a uh, filter, I w if I wanted to put a filter on my voice, I could do so. So now I'm going to take this, and I'm going to take this guy and route it into my uh, filter. Now I'm going to disconnect this from the. You can also click on the cable. I mean, never mind. You can disconnect this from the audio gain. And I'm going to input it into there. So now as you can see, we, my voice is going through an audio gain and a filter. Now I can go ahead and take a look at the GUI here. And I, I'm, I'm just going to make my voice go like weird. Give me one second. I don't know if you can still understand me. I don't know if you can still understand me. Now you probably can. But um, I'm just modulating my voice using this plug. Hello, hello, hello. So um yeah, I just removed that because I don't I because I still want you guys to understand me. But um yeah, basically how Jack works. Now let's take a look at some real life examples. So let's say you have an audio track in Ardor. Uh, this isn't an audio. This isn't an, this is not an Ardor tutorial. So yeah. So let's say you wanted to um, make a drum beat, for example inside of this program called Hydrogen, which is a drum machine. So I'm making a little, just like, beat here. Just random beat. And let's say... So, I have my thing. Doesn't work. Anyway, as you can see here, this Hydrogen thing has just been added. So hydrogen is going to give us outputs, okay? So the outputs of hydrogen are going to in two places. The outputs of hydrogen are going into the simple screen recorder, so basically my recorder right here, and um, it's also going into the system playback. Now let's say I want to record the output of hydrogen inside of a audio track. So I want to record this drum beat inside of Ardor. So that's easy to do. So I'm going to go ahead and take my output, and by the way, I don't want the hydrogen output here. So um, you shouldn't be able to hear that, yeah. Mm, yeah. 
Anyway, but you should be able to still hear me. Hello, yeah. So yeah, you can still hear me. However, if I go ahead and play this hydrogen thing, neither I nor you can hear it. Not that I want only me to hear it, okay? See, I would attach it to there. And I would take this guy and remove it from the screen recorder. So now I can now I can hear the uh, playback, but you can't. So I actually don't want anyone to hear the playback. So yeah. So now let's say I want to record that audio that, that I was talking about. So I'm going to take both of these outputs and I'm going to input them into the audio. But there's a problem. Right here, it is already connected to my mic. I can easily just right click and disconnect from the system capture, aka my mic. So then I'm going to take both of these outputs and put them into the audio one. And then it's going to go ahead and take both of these and daisy chain them into the auditioner. Um, so yeah. Anyway, so now, as you can see, so I'm going to quickly record. Uh, so again, this isn't an Ardor tutorial, so I'm going to start recording. So, as you can see, these drums have just been recorded. So these drums that were just being played in hydrogen have been recorded. The reason being, the only the only input um, can I zoom? Uh, aha, so I can. The reason being, the only input is the reason being the only input into this audio track is hydrogen. Therefore, hydrogen is kind of acting like a microphone for this audio track, and therefore it recorded the output from hydrogen, if that makes sense. So you can use Jack to do whatever, really whatever you want. Let's take a look at a few more examples, okay? So um, let's say I wanted to, for whatever reason, m like modulate or something like that. Modulate my, let's say I wanted to put like some kind of um, weird phaser thing on top of hydrogen, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this from there, and then I'm gonna add a like uh, I don't even know what should I even add. Uh, I can do I can do a calf reverb. This is gonna kind of do that. I'm gonna take the output of hydrogen left. Make sure you get the right ones or else it's gonna sound weird. So L and R go to L and R and then out L and R go into the both of them go into the audio track. And then the audio track is yeah. Delete that. And now we have this here. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and once again Start recording. So that was kind of a fail, actually. So as you can see, it's kind of a bit more roomy, but I didn't actually edit this, so I'm gonna turn up the, de the decay time. It doesn't do anything because it's already recorded. Anyway. I'm going to go ahead and start recording. Just listen to how reverb it is. So I can also ch add a pitch shifter to this guy. Really, you can add whatever you want. Let's talk about the downsides of Jack. So the, obviously the upsides are you can is you can do virtual cables 
wherever you want, you can do whatever you want with all of these virtual cables and you can manually configure every single input and output. Which honestly is just amazing. Plus you can add, plus you can just instantly add all of your effects, for example, if you wanted, you know, there's voice meter on Windows, um, you, for, you could add an EQ directly onto your voice with, uh, with Jack. Importing it into your, importing it into your, uh, screen recorder, or whatever. So really, you can do whatever you want, um, and that's the upside, you can configure whatever you want. Downside is it is a tad hard to can actually configure. And um a tad hard to actually configure. But um I'm listening on YouTube comments and if you guys have any other questions about anything really, then you guys can go ahead and ask. So yeah. Thanks so much for watching.